Well, hey, and welcome to the video blog. I'm glad you're with us. A couple of things. First of all, absolutely overwhelmed by the reaction I've gotten to opening auditions for the channel, looking for somebody or maybe a couple of people to help produce uh, videos to expand the channel. And uh, if you want to get them in, you go to my website, motormouth.ca and send in a submission. You need to link the video somewhere else. Most people can just host it on their own YouTube channel. It's easy to do and then send it through. A couple of minutes long with your smartphone. I don't have my smartphone here, but, but yeah, don't do it like this. Do it like this with your smartphone and, uh, and send it on in. A couple of questions. Yes, you need to be Canadian. It's better if you live near a major city so we can get access to cars. And the other thing is how long are the submissions going to be open? Well, probably for about another month. I'm really looking for the right person. So if it takes a little bit longer, that's fine. And if there's a couple of candidates that are good, I might add more than one. So get your submissions in. There's been a lot, I mean a lot of submissions on that. Now, a lot of questions. I started up the Q&A blog again, and uh, I hadn't done it for a while and got really uh, overwhelmed by how many questions came through. It's the same drill. Go to my website, motormouth.ca, click on the contact form and get your questions in. So I'm going through them in chronological order, and there's lots. I've got lots of content already for many um, videos, but feel free to get them in. The first question comes from Dario, and Dario lives in Christchurch, New Zealand. Way Way to go, I like that. He's asking about braking in a vehicle. He says, I live in New Zealand. I recently bought a Fiesta ST. That's a great little car. Um, there are no specific details on, in the manual, but I heard an oil change at the end of the break-in period is worth it. Uh, what would you say, worth doing or just wait till the first service? Um, it, it comes in at about 140 US dollars, all right? So here's the thing. Uh, I used to think the same thing. So the break-in period might be a thousand or two thousand kilometers. I'm not exactly sure, but the first oil change might be four, five, six thousand kilometers. I used to think that it was worthwhile after the first thousand kilometers or so to change the oil. Uh, we all hear those stories about, you know, the the the, the sleeves and the pistons. Uh, you might have little pieces that are in the oil, and it's good to clean that out. But I talked to um, a technician about this, and he said, no, 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 no. One of the reasons that you don't want to do that is typically when a car is brand new, they put an additive in and it actually is a little bit more abrasive. Now, why would they want that? Well, they want the pistons to seat inside the cylinder walls and the rings so that they're uniform. And I thought this was quite interesting. And he said, no, don't change the oil until the very first service interval because if you take that out then you're taking out that additive that's going to help seat the pistons to the piston rings and the cylinder walls so that is something that you should actually not do so I I was misguided all these years I thought for sure you did that but no just just drive it till the first change and follow the regiment for the break-in and, and away you go this one's from Joe and um, he talks about Japanese shared platforms. Hey, Zach, been a big fan, started and uh, started watching you on TV and now subscribe to your YouTube channel. I'm looking into leasing a Lexus IS300, an Infiniti Q60 or an Acura TLX. My concern is their cars um, are simply Toyotas, Nissans and Hondas with a different body. Am I right? I've test driven the three and uh, what they feel like to me as a previous BMW 3 Series owner. The Lexus IS is particularly creaky with poor noise insulation. That's interesting. I hate to pay a premium on a nameplate. Is there added value? Your thoughts? Well, first of all, when you're buying a, a luxury uh, arm of a, a make like Nissan, Toyota or Honda, you're actually getting an extra year of warranty. So that is worth something. Most manufacturers, it's three years. Most premium brands, it's four years. The only exception in Canada uh, that I can uh, think of is Volkswagen gives you four years and, and Mitsubishi gives you 10 years. So yes, you get an extra year of warranty for being a premium vehicle. Now in the Toyota world, when it comes to Lexus, that's a rear wheel or all wheel drive vehicle, uh, which is very different. That's really on its own unique platform. The TLX is not, that. Ha that is on an Accord platform. Platform. I truly believe the Accord is a better car. I don't like the TLX at all. I just think take a pass on that. The Infiniti Q60 is another car that really doesn't share components with uh, any um, Nissan products. So the TLX is the one that is the closest to its uh, less expensive Honda cousin. So of the three, the Q60 I think is a wonderful product. Acura TLX, forget about it. The Lexus IS is old now and I'm really surprised to hear you say that it, it creaks 
weeks because Lexus products are right at the very top when it comes to most dependability studies. They actually beat everybody along with Porsche. Uh, so, you know, of the three, if you wanted something new, the Q60 would definitely be one, but the uh, Lexus is kind of like the gold standard. Next question comes from Barry. And Barry is in Midland, Ontario. Was hoping to get your take on which Porsche, this is my kind of question, would be best for Southern Ontario and thinking about uh, resale ability. The 911S or the GTS, a uh, four or two wheel drive. Which options are best um, uh, and for what reason? All right, now, the S models are typically um, a wonderful option to go with and you can get them in two or four wheel drive. The GTS is typically a last year production run and they add in a whole bunch of extra features to the vehicle. Uh, so you're getting um, extra features for about the same price. Actually, if you configured the non-GTS car with the same features, they're typically more expensive. So the GTS in relative terms is a bargain even though they're expensive models. So the GTS would be the vehicle that would hold its value better than the regular S. Two or, or four wheel drive, Typically, two-wheel drive cars are the purists kind of car. The people that really like to drive and like uh, are real enthusiasts will want the two-wheel the two -wheel or rear-wheel drive. But the all-wheel drive is nice to have, especially if you're going to drive it in those shoulder seasons where it could be cold and rainy and take it off the road in the wintertime. But the GTS will be the one that you will get the best resale value for. Now, I owned a Carrera S and I owned a Carrera 4S. And even though a lot of people think that the S is the pure enthusiast car, I preferred the 4S. I just like that extra level of grip, especially driving in cold, wet weather in Canada. I kind of liked it. And there really was no difference that I could tell, <clears throat> excuse me, unless I went out on a racetrack. And you probably wouldn't be able to tell if you're just an average everyday driver. So the 4 might be the way to go. But definitely the GTS would have better resale value because there's fewer of them out there. Supply and demand. Next question comes from Vlad. He doesn't say Vlad the Impaler, just Vlad. Hey Zach, I'm a student in Montreal looking at purchasing my first car this summer. Good for you. I have a budget between five and six thousand dollars Canadian uh, with cash to spend. I like German cars. My parents have many Volkswagens. I'm looking at an 07 to 09 VW Rabbit, um, the uh, City Golf Jetta Passat, and even a 2005 to 2007 A4 manual transmission. Most have 100, 125,000 kilometers on the odometer. Would you recommend these cars? Also consider buying a, a new Golf and uh, doing the leasing with a $5,000 down payment on the vehicle. Well, here's one thing. I personally don't think uh, putting money down on a lease is a good idea. You're better to keep the $5,000 in the bank or invest it some other way and just pay for the lease. Uh, you know you have the money there if you ever need it, <clears throat> if you ever want to use it towards buying out the car at the end. But uh, Volkswagen Golf uh, is not too, too expensive. I've seen them um, with leases that are really, really quite affordable. I, I would not buy an 09 Rabbit City Golf Jetta or Passat or an A4. Um, Volkswagen has improved their reliability and their dependability, but mostly on the newer cars, the cars that have been coming out within the last few years. Having uh, known a lot of people with older Volkswagen products, you either get one of two things. You get one that needs nothing, it's absolutely bulletproof and will work incredibly well, or on the other hand, it's just a gremlin, it always needs constant maintenance. Now their newer products are definitely improving in terms of quality, so the lease of a vehicle isn't a bad way to go, especially if you want a German car. Uh, regular viewers know I love German cars, I always like to have them under warranty. So. Uh, get the best deal you can on a lease. You can get some amazing uh, Volkswagen leases. And here's the thing. You don't have to go up very high in the Volkswagen trim line in order to get a fairly nicely equipped car. So keep the cost down. Get the best lease you can. I think that's a better way to go because you buy one of these older cars, you could be in for a quick repair of $1,000 or $1,500 in, in short order. 
Next question comes from Anna, who lives in uh, Byron Center, USA. Thanks for watching. Hey, Zach, love your videos. Longtime fan and subscriber from Michigan. So there you go, Byron City is in Michigan. I'll be in the market for a slightly used vehicle next year. I'd like something all-wheel drive in the winters, around $30,000 US. I like to drive fast. No SUVs or crossovers for me. I currently drive a boring Toyota. Any suggestions? Well, Anna, I thought about this, and I think what you should buy and you can get it for less than um, 30,000, no problem, is a WRX by Subaru. Subaru WRX is gonna have all wheel drive. You can get it with a manual or without if you like. It is a lot of fun to drive. It's got a turbocharged boxer. That means that the pistons go this way instead of this way. It has a low center of gravity. It's got fantastic grip. It's a lot of fun to drive. And the newer ones actually have nicer interiors and nicer radios. So. Uh, that one, I think, is the easy winner, and, I, and you'll love driving it. It's a load of fun to drive. The next question comes from Frank in North Vancouver. Hey, Zach, love the reviews. Keep up the good work. I have an 11 Volkswagen Jetta TDI that's been a, day, a piece of junk from day one. Back to my Volkswagen story. Can't wait to get the cash back and buy something else. Not a Volkswagen. So the, the thing is, hold on to the car. You are gonna get the buyback. You are gonna get the check also uh, for owning one of these cars. So uh, people who have Volkswagen TDIs are gonna come out of this okay, not a problem. Plus, the buyback will be based on uh, September 2015 values. So you're gonna do all right. Um, any suggestions looking at an RVR Crosstrek or HRV? Anything else you can suggest would be appreciated. Many thanks, Frank. Um, the RVR with the larger engine uh, really changed my opinion of that vehicle. I thought it was an excellent product minus the steering. The steering feel really is quite vague. The Crosstrek on the new Subaru uh, global platform uh, is going to be excellent. I've already driven the Impreza. I had a quick look at it in Geneva and I'm going to get a chance to drive it before it comes out. Apparently, I might be flying away somewhere far away to drive it, and I'll tell you all about that, so stay tuned. I think the Crosstrek is an excellent product, and the HRV, I think, offers a lot for uh, their base model. It comes very, very nicely equipped. So of those three, I would probably go towards the Crosstrek, but there are others. Um, there's the new CHR from Toyota you might want to check out. It's only available with front-wheel drive. Um, so yeah, if those three, I would definitely choose the new Crosstrek. If you're not in a rush, it's coming later this summer. But if you do need a vehicle, uh, they might have some good deals on it before the new one arrives. This one's a little bit longer. Paul Mellon and lives in Penticton in the beautiful Okanagan, where I like to go and spend my summer vacations. In a recent Q&A, he talked briefly about buying or leasing. Can you talk more about this subject? Uh, further, you mentioned the warranty that you can buy at the end of the lease. What are your thoughts? Okay, when you lease a car, you're making a monthly payment on the car to another entity. The other entity owns the car. If it's Honda, it's Honda Finance. If it's BMW, it's BMW uh, Financial or whatever it's called. They own the car, you just make payments to them, okay? Now, at the end of the lease, you have the option to buy that car from that arm at a set price. That's all predetermined when you sign up to lease the car. So at that point, you're now buying a used car from that entity and, the, and it, ought, it will qualify for a pre-owned warranty. And when you get that pre-owned warranty, you can often get uh, extended for, in most cases, from three to four years to six, even more, if you wanna pay extra. Now that's not to say if you buy a car, you can't buy an extended warranty um, at the time, but the good news is, you're gonna be able to buy a factory warranty from that entity. In the case of BMW, it'll be a BMW certified pre-owned car, and that definitely gives you peace of mind. And anything German, as I always say, it's great to have it under warranty. Now the other thing a lot of people don't realize, when you buy a car, we'll pick $20,000. You buy a car, and then you have to pay the tax on that car if you're buying it. Now, most people take the tax and they add it in to their uh, overall cost, and then they start paying interest and paying that off sometimes four, five, six, seven years. So you're paying interest on tax as you go along and make payments on that car. When you lease the car, every single month you make a payment and you, make, you, make, you pay tax on that payment. It's 100 and, 69 or 269 dollars a month you pay tax on that amount every single month so you're not borrowing money over many years to pay the tax that's an advantage now another advantage and a lot of people don't realize 
This entity, whether it's Honda Financial or BMW Financial Services, whatever they're called, they own the car. If your car was in a big accident and say it needed 10 or $15,000 to have it repaired, well, just so long as you get it repaired to the company's specifications, then it's fine. Now, if you're going to buy a car and it has a $15,000 repair on it, is it going to be worth the same price as a vehicle that has not had an accident? No. The vehicle with an accident is going to have to be sold at a discount. Okay? So if you bought the car, your car is now depreciated more. It's called accelerated depreciation. But the thing is, at the end of the lease, if you've done the repairs to the company's satisfaction, you just hand the car back to them and they absorb the depreciation and you don't. So it's an extra layer of insurance against um, accelerated depreciation. Another reason why I like leasing. Uh, if you do the right number of kilometers each year and you can afford the monthly payments, then leasing often is the way to go. That's just my thought. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure you get them through to me. Go to my website, motormouth.ca, click on the contact tab, get the questions in. They come into my uh, inbox. It's much easier for me. And if you have any questions, get them in. I will get to them eventually. Uh, this week, I'm heading to Spain to drive the e-Golf and the Golf R and the GTI. So stay tuned for that. There'll be a video on that. And then the following week, I'm going to Shanghai for the Shanghai Auto Show. And uh, the ultimate trip, I think, is coming up in the middle of May. I'm going to Stuttgart in Germany to watch the 1 millionth 911 roll off the factory. And we're going to get a chance to drive some vintage Carreras and actually go out on the track. So that's an epic trip. And it's coming up towards the middle of May. That's all the time I have for now. Make sure you get your questions in and thanks for watching.